Hello, welcome back to our channel. And uh, in our previous module, we talked about using the class A amplifier. And in that, we understood the operating principle of it, uh, the construction of that amplifier, which is a class A amplifier. We understood what's the difference between small signal amplifier and the large signal amplifier. And we also understood if we want to use the class A amplifier to be a power amplifier, or audio power amplifier applications, then what kind of modifications we can do. Also, we understood what are the advantages and what are the drawbacks. So if you are new to this module and the channel, please refer back to our earlier part and then come back to understand fully the new topic today that you can see on your screen. It is called as class B amplifier. It is also called as push-pull amplifier. So there are lots of different classes of the amplifiers, such as your class A, your class B, then you have class AB, then you have class C, and finally you can also have class D. So all these configurations have their advantages and disadvantages. Now, in today's module, we are going to focus on the class B amplifier, which is also called as push-pull amplifier. In understanding this concept of class B, we would recall some concepts from class A amplifier. So as we know the first point, in the class A amplifier, the conduction angle is 360 degree. It means you. this is an amplifier, you apply an input signal, to the amplifier and you get an amplified output from the amplifier. It means the transistor inside the amplifier conducts the signal for full 360 degree or both the wave, uh, both the halves of the input signal. That's why we call it as the conduction angle is 360 degree. So here in the class B, the idea is in terms of block diagram, you see, you have a DC power supply, you have positive power supply and the negative power supply. Then you have amplifier circuit that is composed of output transistors. So there is a one transistor here. There is another transistor here. In between, there is a symmetry and there is a common ground. So when you apply an input, you basically deliver a load current to the output. So you have a small small signal input and then you have an amplified output. So there is a power delivered to the load. So in class B, this kind of configuration is called as push-pull. It means for one positive half cycle of the input, your upper part of the circuit conducts the current and delivers power to the load. For the negative half cycle of the input, the bottom transistor conducts the current and delivers current to the load, eventually adding both the currents and giving you the power output. So this kind of push-pull configurations is used to enhance the output power efficiency of the amplifier. So remember, what is the power efficiency? It is eta expressed in percentage, which is the ratio of P out divided by PDC multiplied by the 100. So P output is what is the power you deliver to the load and PDC is how much power gets consumed by the circuit in delivering the output power to the load. So you basically what you are doing, you have an input power uh, of the signal and you are delivering the amplified version to the output load and in doing so, the efficiency of the class A amplifier was restricted to the 30%. But using this push-pull configuration, we can let the burden on the transistor to be less because in the class A, your output transistor is a single transistor that conducts for a full 360 degree of the cycle. But now in the push-pull, you have only one half cycle for each transistor so the load on the transistor is minimum and that helps us to enhance the power efficiency because you can deliver the maximum power to the load while consuming minimum power to the circuit 
So here is another configuration where you see input applied, you have for one half of the circuit, you have one half of the circuit, and in the middle, you connect the load, which is receiving the power. Okay, so you have each transistor that is going to conduct for only one half cycle of the input wave. Unlike class A, you have 360 degree of conduction. Now here, you have only 180 degree of conduction for each individual transistor. So that's why we say the conduction angle for the class V amplifier is only 180 degree. And because of that, you can have up to 75, 70% of the power delivered to the load. And minimum is conducted, minimum is dissipated into the circuit. So uh, there is an advantage uh, of this uh, transistor class B amplifier also. The advantage is that when you don't have any input signal present, your transistor circuit, upper half and the lower half, they don't conduct current. And therefore, unlike class A amplifier, you are, where the transistor is always on, here, no input means no current delivered to the load and your transistors remain switched off. Therefore, there is no much heat dissipated into the circuit and you don't require heat sink. But in class A, your single transistor is always on. Therefore, it conducts a current, a heavy current, and it requires a large heat sink to handle that large amount of current. So how to construct the class B amplifier? So here is a transformer-based class B amplifier. It is a push-pull configuration. Like I said, you have a transistor Q1, you have transistor Q2, which are of the same type, both are NPN, and they are connected in such a way that the emitters of both the transistors are connected together. The base of the transistors are connected by means of this input transformer. So you have primary winding of the transformer, and then you have a large output in the secondary winding of the transformer. So when you apply an input signal as shown, your transformer's job is to split that signal into two equal parts, but in opposite phase. So for the first uh, positive half cycle, your first transistor Q1 conducts the current while Q2 is switched off nearly in the biased in the cutoff region. And this transistor delivers this current to the second transformer that is used at the output side. During the negative half cycle of the input, your transistor Q2 becomes saturated and it gets current into the conduction while Q1 goes into cutoff and the Q2 job is to deliver its amount of current and it is now delivered to the output transformer. The output transformer job is two times, two types. One is to match the impedance between the load and the amplifier's output impedance. And second job of the transformer is to transform this signal, which are delivered by Q1 and Q2, and add them together at the secondary. So here is this basically a discontinuity between uh, when you transition from negative to the positive, that concept is called as crossover distortion, which we will explain in some other module as we progress. So as you can see again, so the power efficiency is up to 70% here. Why? Because at any given point in time, only one transistor is handling the current. That is the conduction angle is only 180 degree. Therefore, there is not much load on the transistor to handle large amount of current. So no requirement of heat sink. And the second, since you have a conduction for only 180 degree of the input cycle, your heat dissipated into the circuit is almost half as compared to the class A amplifier. So, uh, and the final advantage is like you have no input present, no conduction, and therefore no heat, and therefore no requirement of your heat sink and also your efficiency is enhanced.
Now, let us understand the concepts of class B amplifier using the complementary transistors. Why we need a complementary transistor? Because in the previous parts, as we have seen, we have used a transformer, which is a heavy, bulky, and that in that increases the cost of constructing a class B amplifier using transformers. So to circumvent that problem, what you can do in the in, in place of the uh, transformer as an output stage, you can use two complementary transistors. One is PNP and another is NPN. N -P -N. If your circuit is constructed using the JFET or MOSFET, you can also use the P-channel MOSFET and you can use the N-channel MOSFET. So this kind of complementary stage at the output, instead of output transformer, use these complementary transistors to deliver the each half of the output current to the load. Therefore, you can solve the problem of using the transformer as an output stage in the class B amplifier. There is one more concept why class A amplifiers are having a drawback in terms of efficiency and the heat dissipation and why class B amplifier takes an advantage. So that concept can be explained by means of this operating point or load line analysis. So you see that this is an output current. This is an output voltage of the transistor. So red line indicates the AC load line concept. And for these lines are the base currents of the transistors for which there is a conduction in the transistors. So now in a class A amplifier, your operating point is in the middle of this load line, which is indicated by Q. This is called as a DC load line. And around this operating points, your signal gets varied by an amount and your signal is amplified. So since the Q point of the class A amplifier is biased in the middle, your transistor conducts the current for 360 degree of input cycle. So there is a lot of power dissipated during the conduction. A lot of heat is wasted during the conduction. That is with the class A amplifier. However, the class B helps us in improving the efficiency by means of reducing the DC power consumption and also delivering the same output to the load, which is the power output to the load by means of having its Q point at this bottom on the output voltage line. So where the current IC is equal to zero and the voltage is maximum. And as I said, you have only one half cycle of the current where the transistor conducts. And for the remaining half cycle, your other transistor conducts current. So therefore the heat is minimized and you don't have much power dissipation by having the Q point at the bottom of the load line. So that's the advantage of class B amplifier. So hope you understood the difference between class A and class B amplifier, how to construct class B amplifier using complementary transistor, using transformers at the input and as an output stage. And you understood the concept of biasing the load line. And you also understood how class B amplifier has advantage in terms of reduced heat and therefore enhanced power delivery or power efficiency. So if you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to our channel for more engaging contents like this. Share this video with others for a wider reach and stay tuned for more informative videos like this. Till then, wish you happy learning.